Ratan, thanks a lot for being with us at the conference. It's been great having you. And uh, if I can just sum up two main points that you spoke about this morning in the plenary session, you talked about, uh, you linked green with productivity, and you also talked about how uh, risk is overpriced in developing countries. So let's focus on the green link with productivity. Uh, what in your interactions over here would you take back home uh, as the key point to drive um, in the policy circle, in the market, uh, amongst the market players, to scale up green finance if it is linked to productivity? What, wh where, what will you lay your bets on? I would say that we need, uh, we have two challenges in India. We are undergoing a development transformation, not a transition to more green from less green. And the imperatives, the investment imperatives of a transformation are somewhat different from those of a transition. So the first thing is to educate investors that this is as much the case with green bonds as it is with any other financial product. Having done so, uh, to also drive home the point that we understand that uh, going green in India's development transformation is productivity enhancing. Whether you look at how we produce food, to how we deliver health and education, to how we deliver energy, to how we deliver low-cost housing for a market of one billion people. The greener we are across our ecosystem and production process, the more efficient we are, and therefore there's money to be made in India because green is efficient, and that is what should drive investors towards green and climate policy. So let me take this opportunity, since you do have uh, government's ear by being in the PMA EAC, are these, is green in any case a part of the discussion there uh, uh, in, at PMEAC? Because I remember in one of your first interviews you said climate is not on the plate. What does that mean when you are actually Climate talking? is not on the plate, development is. And sustainable development is about many things, but also importantly about climate. So if you like climate, in India is on the, play, on the plate every day in all policy making circles. Our Prime Minister has committed to India achieving a renewable energy target, which is, was considered ambitious, but I think we have shown we can do it. India has lead founder of the International Solar Alliance, and therefore our efforts are going international. And whether it is cleaning the Ganga, our major river, or it is moving towards efficient, productive sourcing of energy, principally through renewables, or it is building a more efficient railway by making the railways bigger and greener and more efficient. Sustainability and sustainable development is at, for efficiency reasons, the productivity reasons, is at the heart of what we do, in everything we do. And I think there is a cross-party, multi-partisan consensus that to be green is to be productive, and if India is going to become uh, an economy that is a middle-income country and not fall into a middle-income trap, then the stuff we need to do to do that, whether it is producing food for the masses, whether it is producing clothing for the masses, whether it is producing low-cost housing, this has to be done at scale at, and frugally so that it's affordable and frugally means efficient and efficient means green. So you're basically moving from productive to green rather than from green to productive. That's what I meant by the fact that India is not undergoing a transition. India is undergoing a transformation. That transformation is underpinned by a rise to scale of producing what all Indians want to consume at affordable prices. That process of production and consumption involves efficiency so that things are frugal. And being efficient means being green. Okay, so what do you really see then the role of the capital markets in this transition, in this transformation? And what needs to be done really to, to accelerate the space? We need to make sure that we develop our fixed income markets, and I see green bonds as playing a very important leading role there, especially in infrastructure. We need to make sure that this development of our fixed income markets, our bond markets, results in a lowered cost of capital, and I see green bonds playing a huge role there in providing, if you like, lower cost of capital for key areas of investment. Uh, we need lots of money, and if I were to put it in a nutshell, Neha, we are telling the pension funds in Europe and in the US, we want to pay your pensions. Come to us, deal with us, invest in areas that you consider important, and if it is green that you want to invest in, we're open for business there because we understand that green is efficient. So there is no contradiction for us in investing and uh, in, in, in green areas because green for us is development, 
and uh, I want you to get more than 2% return on your pension funds. And if you're not in the fastest growing economy in the world, you're not going to get it. So we're open. Work with us, work with climate bonds, work with the markets in London, but we need resources at scale to invest in development processes, to improve productivity, and I think this is the biggest clarion call I can give to investors. So, so we really have seen that there is movement in the international flow of capital into India through specifically now talking green bonds, but it is not so within the domestic investor community. And how would you see domestic investor community playing a role in, in scaling up again and in, in really addressing the same challenge of scaling up green finance? The domestic investor community, as I was explaining in the morning, is financially constrained in the fixed income space because our financial savings are no more than 11% of GDP. Government borrowing takes up more than half. The public sector takes up another 1% or 2%. So really, there's even for the banks, there's about 3% of GDP to play with. The space for green lies in mobilizing incremental global finance at uh, rates that are reasonable in bankable projects. Uh, what Indian industry and Indian financial sector will bring to that is local expertise and competence and retail reach. That's how I see the partnership. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's of course as one way to go and definitely a very important one. But what about, say, pension funds? What about insurance companies? What about the regulation in these, uh, in these sectors that could, be, that could actually lead to easing up of um, our flow of capital domestically into green? There is no particular inhibition in these companies investing in green. But obviously, as long as the main source of investment in fixed income is a sovereign bond, and sovereign bonds take up 60% of the total bond market, they would not be investing in non-sovereigns, whether green or otherwise. <clears throat> Therefore, it is, it is very, very important that we get incremental capital from outside India, global capital, to come in at scale to invest in green, and then these funds will sort of follow a blend with this global capital. But, but the major attractiveness of green for India is our ability to attract global capital that's earning low rates of return across the developed world into bankable projects in India that are sustainable. And green provides a wonderful bridge between that desire to earn good rates of return, the desire to put money in sustainable uh, areas of investment, and India's need to get finance at scale for productive investment so that we can grow by producing what all Indians can consume. You also talked about just transition and green bonds. So here, uh, would you think that green is, will, is actually a source of livelihood generation, job security, or whatever is in the social space? Or do you think the, the de definition of green has to expand a little bit more? Uh, how do you look at green bonds playing a role in the social and just transition? And if, if I could add to this, would international investors really are the, are the constituency that can drive that within India? There are many things that a just transformation, okay. not a transition, involve. Uh, the finance dimension is best serves justice if the sources of India's growth are to produce what all Indians consume rather than a minority. And to that extent, investing in railways is just because all Indians travel by train. A relative minority of Indians use private transport, right? Investment in cities is just, and investment in low-cost housing is just, just, because all Indians want housing, but only a minority can afford uh, the relatively high-cost housing we have now. The key here is that international finance that comes in at affordable rates in, and improves the productivity and scale of investments in, and production of things that Indians want to consume. That is where we need to be. And we know that the link, the green link here is green is productive, green is efficient. And therefore, as we build a transformation economy, that incremental building needs to come from productive, efficient investments, and therefore, we need green. We are not, like every other country in the world, trying to transit from one system of energy production to another system of energy production. We are not trying to transit from high levels of carbon to low levels of carbon. We are, India has one of the lowest carbon footprints in the world, so I don't need to be lectured by anyone on what we should do about carbon. However, what we are interested in is doing things efficiently and with high productivity, and I think most of us in the policy world now are convinced that to go green is to be productive.
Okay, so one last question since I have this opportunity. Uh, people do say that uh, they, they tend to give a sequential uh, aspect to it, um, that our bond markets are shallow, that is why there is not a, enough growth of green bonds, that our municipalities are not uh, governed very properly, their management practices are not in place, that is why they cannot go to, go to the market. Do you really, how do you see this problem as chicken and egg, what, what comes first uh, in terms of really scaling up green but also getting the governance practices and all of those things in order? We always have to improve governance. But there's ample opportunity as we do so, in, uh, you know, not to follow others and automatically assume that cities is where the first thing will come. I'll give you two areas where we could quadruple, quintuple uh, sort of green bond finance, low cost housing and the railways. We're talking close to you know a few hundred billion dollars worth of financing. Yeah. So why not just take the opportunities that are present here, okay. grow all bond markets if necessary by spearheading that with growing green bonds. Uh, in these two mega areas in India where we're open for business, where we need to improve productivity, and we know that doing in, in, in enhancing railway investment and enhancing investment in green low-cost housing is both productive and frugal. Uh, it is price affordable, and therefore there is no conflict or trade-off here, unlike in the transition. So things for me are much simpler, I think, than people are making these things out to be in the world's fastest growing economy, which needs trillions of dollars of investment to become a $10 trillion economy, which is our aspiration as we move towards our development transformation. The trillion dollar economy where everyone benefits from that trillion dollar growth. Yeah. We do not want to fall into a middle income trap, and I see he, green as being key there. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you. Real for pleasure being here. Thank, thank you for inviting me.